The 2006 Lebanon War was the most terrifying and challenging environment that I have ever faced. This war really did test my skills and abilities, unlike any situation that I had faced previously. Be that learning to fast rope out of helicopters, working with the American SEALs in the Middle East, or even tracking down militia leaders in the Solomon Islands. Unfortunately, I don't have time to share those stories with you today, but the lessons that I learnt from these experiences of facing fear, having a go, how to delegate, and also learning to lead even when it wasn't my job to do so, I think those experiences gave me the skills and the knowledge to be able to not only survive the Lebanon War, but be able to lead my team to safety and make those decisions at the right place and the right time to keep myself and others around me alive. In 2005, I was selected to represent Australia as a peacekeeper with the United Nations on a mission called UNSO. UNSO operates in the Middle East, but specifically within the countries of Lebanon, Syria, and Israel. During my 12 months with the UN, I served in Syria and Lebanon. But during the war itself, I was stationed at patrol base Kiam, which is in southern Lebanon, right at the junction of these three countries. Kiam was considered the most dangerous of all the UN bases in the entire Middle East. And that was because we were surrounded by three Hezbollah bases. The closest of these was only 75 metres from us. So if you think of a standard swimming pool, which is 50 metres long, one and a half swimming pools away was a Hezbollah base. And obviously the Hezbollah were just as interested in monitoring our activities as we, the UN, were interested in monitoring their actions against Israel, and vice versa, the Israelis against the Hezbollah. And as I move forward to talk about the war, I'd like you to keep in the back of your mind that this particular mission that I was serving on was an unarmed peacekeeping force. So despite the fact that we consisted of military personnel from over 23 different nations, at no stage were we permitted to carry weapons. And I'd like you to think about the vulnerabilities that placed us in, particularly once this war started and we had no way of defending ourselves if need be. Now, Kiam was a, was a tiny base. It's no bigger than the size of a tennis court, so very small. At any stage, it would be manned by four or five UN personnel. We'd be rostered out to the base from a team we'll call Team Sierra. Within Team Sierra, we actually had 11 people and we came from 11 different countries. So that made me the only Australian, but also the only woman serving in the entire Kiam region. 